algebra students, today we are going to be solving two and multi-step equations. All right, check this out. Okay, now I know a problem like this gives some of you fits because you want it written the same way every time. You want your x term first, and then you want your co or your constant, and then you want it to equal something. Well, in life it doesn't always happen that way, so we got to be ready, be prepared. Remember that when we're solving for x, our goal is to get x alone whatever the variable is. And remember that we're going to use the inverse order of operations eventually, not necessarily the first step, but to go ahead and get rid of subtraction and addition before we get rid of division and multiplication. So I'm going to look at this problem number one, and I see there's a five here, and I see there's a three, both on the same sides of the equal sign as the variable. Well, the 3 is attached by multiplication. In fact, it's a negative 3, right? Because that negative there, it belongs to the 3, right? It belongs to the number it's in front of. And this is a 5. Well, I'm going to get rid of the 5 first because Saddam told me to. I'm going to undo subtraction and division, addition before I undo division and multiplication. So how do I get rid of this 5? Well, some of you might be thinking to add 5. Well, ask yourself, if I write down plus 5 here, and then I look at just that part of the problem, is 5 plus 5 0? Of course it's not. We know that. We know that's the positive 5. So to get rid of it, I'm going to need a negative 5. All right. But if I subtract 5 from the left-hand side, I have to do it to the right-hand side. So now I end up with a negative 3x equaling 7. Okay, well now to get x alone, I'm going to divide by negative 3 on both sides. Whoa, it's kind of a funky looking 3. All right, so... These three negative threes will cancel. I'll be with x equals negative seven thirds. Or you could say that's negative two and one third. You could do that if you wanted to. It's not required though. Sometimes an improper fraction is a better thing to deal with. But there's nothing wrong with it. Now, if you're going to go decimal, it's negative two and three tenths repeating. If you don't give me this, it's an inaccurate answer, and it'll cost you a little bit of points. Okay, problem number two, I notice right off the bat that I have x terms on the same side of the equal sign. Well, before I do any undoing, I'm going to combine those and make it simpler. I want to turn the problem into a two-step equation so that it's simple to do. 2 and 5 is 7. This problem must be 7x minus 6 equals 8. It's an equivalent form of the original equation. So, 7x is going to equal 14. How the heck did I do that? Well, I have to undo the subtraction. And I will undo the subtraction by adding 6 to both sides. And when I do so, I get 7x equals 14. Right? Then I have to undo the multiplication, and I will do that using division, and I'll divide by 7. And I'll get 2. Now let's go back and check our work here for a minute. Make sure we did these right. Problem number 1, I think x is uh, negative 7 thirds. Well, I'll have 5 minus 3 times negative 7 thirds. Find out what that equals. Well, I'm going to put that over 1, and I see that my fraction can reduce 3 thirds. Boom, boom. Simplify down to 1. The two negatives become a positive, because a negative times a negative is a positive. 5 plus 7 equals 12. So, yeah, I got the right answer. This checks out. On this one here, I know that x is 2, so I'm going to have 2 times 2 minus 6 plus 5 times 2. Well, that's 4 minus 6 
plus 10, that's negative 2 plus 10. And if I have two negatives, 10 positives, I must have 8 positives when it all comes out in the wash. All right, over here. Looks like I've got some like terms again on the left-hand side. And so I'm going to highlight, combine those like terms before I try to listen to Saddam. Very important to do that. And the yellow ones become negative 2x plus 4 equals 16. And now it should be a simple problem. I'll get rid of the addition first. Yielding negative 2x equals 12. And I'll get rid of the multiplication. x is going to equal negative 6. To check my answer, I'll go negative 8 times negative 6 plus 4, plus 6 times negative 6. 48, plus 4, minus 36. Well, 48 minus 36 is 12 plus 8. And that'll be 20. Uh-oh, I have a problem. Oh, I see. I've made a silly mistake. This is why we check our work. Now, my mistake is actually in my check, not in the problem, but I was expecting an answer of 20, uh, of 16, excuse me. And I notice I wrote down plus 8. I should have only written plus 4. 12 plus 4 is 16, and that equals 16, so I did it right. Now, a problem like number 5, you can't combine like terms yet because there's two of this quantity. You could distribute. That would be a good way to do this one. I'll get 4x minus 10 plus 7x equals 12. And then you can highlight or circle or underline or whatever. And then once you've done that, now it's pretty simple. This will give me 11x minus 10 equals 12. I'll add 10 to both sides. 11x is going to equal 22. Divide by, dividing by 11, x will equal 2. Of course, I should definitely check it. And I'll have 2 times the quantity of 2 times 2 minus 5 plus 7 times 2. And this will be 2. So 4 minus 5 plus 14. I'll have 2 times negative 1 plus 14 is working up. And so now I'll have negative 2 plus 14 equals 12. And that's what I wanted. So yeah, I did it right. Okay. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.